creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living Today. We're going to learn how to wear scarves, show some neat storage solutions, and discuss the journey of a healer. One of my guests today is Nancy Nix Rice, and she's a wardrobe consultant and author. Nancy's going to show how to wear a scarf in multiple ways. Scarves are such a great fashion accessory, and they're very versatile. Her book is titled Looking Good, and she's from St. Louis, Missouri. Another guest is Bruce Johnson, and he's the spokesperson for Minwax, which is located in Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. Bruce is going to show how to use dresser drawers to create an under-the-bed storage bin. This home storage solution is so easy and attainable for even first-time do-it-yourselfers. And we'll begin the show today with Dr. Daniel Morris, who is a doctor of oriental medicine, about a book he's written on relieving pain in just three seconds. He's going to share his journey from being a licensed optician to becoming an acupuncturist. Dr. Morris is from Raton, New Mexico. Dr. Morris, it's a real pleasure to have you on the show today. And, and I've always wanted to talk to someone about acupuncture simply because before I went and I have had some treatments, it was really pretty much um, a, a mystery. I, I was really afraid the needles were going to hurt. Um, it's it's an it's a ancient art. Yes, it's been around since the Stone Age, actually, but the exact date it started, I don't think anybody really knows, mm -hmm. but it's been around for a long time, and right now uh, it's, it's becoming more and more credible. The insurance companies are paying for it. The doctors at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota are using acupuncture. Yes. How, how does a person become trained to be an acupuncturist? Right now, it used to be two years of, uh, of schooling, and now California just passed a law where it's nine years of college to become nine. an acupuncturist. Uh -huh. Yes. What are some of the types of ailments, pain, mm -hmm. that acupuncture would treat that maybe would surprise us? Uh, well, we already know headaches and mm -hmm. neck pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, back pain. But right now, I have patients that are doing chemo and radiation, and, mm -hmm. that, and the doctors are just amazed that they're not losing their hair, they're not getting sick. At uh, what point do they try the acupuncture? Uh, usually yeah. these are patients of, uh, they might call me, and that's what I probably recommend for other people too, is if you're not sure if the acupuncturist can help you, just call and ask them, I have this, this, and this, can you help me? Uh -huh. And you'll find somebody. So maybe before they started the radiation and chemo? Yes, okay. yes. And actually I do, uh, there's a treatment to boost your immune system, so when you start the mm -hmm. chemo and radiation, you're more prepared for it. Oh, that's good. What about yeah. someone who's had a stroke? Actually, I just had a, a patient who had a stroke, and what's interesting, after the stroke, the patient's blood pressure is just all over the place. And they're using all these blood pressure medicines, and they can't figure out how to stabilize uh -huh. it. One acupuncture treatment, and that was blood pressure. is 120 over 80, 120 over 80. And do you think that would be true of everyone? It, does it work that fast on most people? Everybody is different, and every acupuncturist is different, too. So sure. there might, they might use a different treatment for a stroke. But one of the points I use for stroke is right below the knuckle be below the middle finger. This is an excellent point to treat a stroke, prevent a stroke, but it's also near the neck point. And so many people with strokes have neck problems. Well, and I w I'm surprised in talking about some of these that it actually works. What about something like uh, asthma, allergies? With asthma, there's stress-induced asthma, cold-induced asthma, exercise-induced asthma, allergy-induced asthma, mm -hmm. heat-induced asthma. All of them are different treatment. Oh. All of them are a different medicinal formula, and also all of them will have different nutritional information. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the doctor for asthma, you're just getting treated for asthma, but I look at it as we want a finer diagnosis mm -hmm. for asthma. Find and then, out what's really causing it. Yes, I recently saw a nine-year-old girl, and she had exercise-induced asthma, so she couldn't be in the playground. Uh, she was taking the inhaler and the medication mm -hmm. all her life. By uh, fourth or fifth treatment, she's off of her medication, her mother called me about six months later, and she said her daughter's on the basketball team. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, and another uh, something that we hear a lot about is fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, I just go right down the line, right down your worst pain, let's get rid of it. What's the next pain? Let's get rid of it. Hmm. What's the next pain? But with fibromyalgia, I do see a pattern, and it's usually for older women, and a lot of them are a little, about 30, 40 pounds overweight. But oh. I always look for patterns with every condition. Mm -hmm. So, 
that might be a way that we would choose the acupuncture doctor that we'd want to go to is find it instead of being treated just like everybody else it's more it can be more individualized which is what you do yes all of my treatments are custom and with most acupuncturists the treatments are going to be custom but like say for example like asthma asthma is a lung problem so I look at the lungs. I don't look at the diagnosis. I think, what's affecting the lungs? Is it cold weather? Is it the exercise? Is mm -hmm. it the hot weather? So different treatments for different conditions. So would that maybe be why you came up with this book that you wrote? So since everybody's treatment is so totally different? Yes. Well, it was a Native American nurse who got me involved with the book. I treated... Uh, the tribal chief's mother for knee pain. Uh -huh. And then uh, I saw her about a couple of weeks later, and the nurse said she hasn't complained of pain. She hasn't taken any pain meds. And wow. so the nurse said, I would like to learn this. So I said, let me come up with something that's easy for you to learn. Mm -hmm. And I, every week I get calls from nurses or patients. They'll say, I had a headache. I use your point, and the, and the pain went away. And they're just uh -huh. acting like they're surprised. But... Uh, I'm not surprised. So anyone can use this book. Yes. Um, what about women who are pregnant or thinking about becoming I, pregnant? I don't use acupuncture other than a morning sickness. After that, I don't use acupuncture. Oh, okay. So it's not really, you want to be safe. Mm -hmm. So. And what do you hope to accomplish with the book? Well, University of New Mexico, they just did a study for on my book and phone app, and they said the marketing for, this, for these two would be the military and the Native American tribes. Now, why? Well, with the military, say some guy's in a foxhole in Afghanistan and he's got a headache. Well, we can't give him pain meds. No. Uh -uh. But we'd be able to, through uh, telemedicine, or actually, you heard of telemedicine, this is teletreatments. Mm -hmm. So you could send him the points over the phone on where to press to get rid of his headache. Uh -huh. Or if they had studied the book before they go. Yes, and with Native ever. Americans, their philosophy is living within nature, mm -hmm. so I think they have a problem sometimes with medications and all this, mm -hmm. so they're looking for something that's natural and uh, it's, it's easy to use and the results are instant. Well, I, th I, th I think all of us would like that. We'd like to be cured of yeah. whatever's hurting us immediately. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations on the book and thank you again for being here on the show today. Thank you for having me. Bruce, it's always nice to have yeah. you here. And I, we were talking about storage, and I'm just like everybody else. There's yeah. never enough storage. And nope. I've seen all of those units that are go under the bed, and right. I thought, well, that's a great idea. Yeah, but, but they, there's some problems. Well, you could right? have some problems, right? You know, I raised two sons, and we were always looking for more storage mm -hmm. space. And the under the bed seems very logical, mm -hmm. but those units you're talking about seems like they were either very expensive. Yeah or poorly constructed, you know, particle board, veneer, yeah. that sort of thing. Almost when you fill them full, you ah. pull it out and the handles come apart. off. No. Yeah, right. So when I was cleaning out my closet not too long ago, and again, looking at that idea of storing it under the bed, uh -huh. the idea occurred to me, well, why not use dresser drawers? And oh. I was at a flea market, and I saw a small chest of drawers that had water damage around the feet. Uh -huh. But the drawers looked fine. Oh. And so I had the idea of taking a dresser drawer and putting casters underneath, That's inexpensive casters, uh -huh. so they would roll in and out underneath the bed. Uh -huh. And so I, I got that idea, I wanted to work with it, and I thought I'd bring it here today and show you how I did it. Okay. Now, one of the things you want to do is make sure that it's a good quality drawer. Well, yeah, you, know, you, you don't, don't want to spend the money and especially the time. No, not if it's particle board mm -hmm. and falling apart. I like the fact that these have nice dovetail joints mm -hmm. and it's solid wood. Solid so wood. it's going to hold together. Mm -hmm. and, and many times, you know, the handles on the front are in great shape, and oh, yeah. so in a case like this, I would just leave those handles, or you could change it if you sure. needed to. But now, sometimes we've got a little bit of work to do. If you oh, look over here, we've we got his scratches, yeah. But what I'm gonna do with this one is, I'm gonna use a stain marker, and these are great because you don't have to get a can of stain out, you can just take your stain marker, rub some stain right over that scratch. Even though that looks darker. Right, okay. then when you wipe it off, oh. Notice it blends in. Uh -huh. And the nice thing about the stain markers is they come in several different colors. colors. So if you don't get it right the first time, take a Just different one, experiment with it. But it's a great way to touch up those scratches without having to refinish it. And is it usually better to start with a, if you don't know which color exactly, start with start a lighter, lighter one and work, and work up. your way up? Right. Okay. And then also many times these are going to be dirty. And so oh. we're, we'll take this one and we're going to just spray a little bit of a wood cleaner. Now, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you're not using 
you know, some homemade remedy that's actually going to hurt the finish. Mm, yeah, because you know, this is this pretty is, wood. Yeah, this is a wood cabinet cleaner by Minwax, and it's a great way uh -huh. to clean it up. Again, we don't want to have to refinish it. I see. And so we're going to do yeah, that. Yeah, that already too. looks yeah. better. All right, we can set that one aside. Let's put that one up there. Now, on this particular one, you know, sometimes you end up with a drawer that, um, you know, maybe won't fit underneath your bed with the casters on it. Oh, yeah. And so what yeah. we're going to do on this one is, rather than put the casters on, we're going to put on one of these glides, that uh, furniture glides are very inexpensive. Oh. And what I've done on this one is I've already pre-drilled the hole, uh -huh. and so I can take my hammer and I can just tap that in. I can do like this. Like so. Yeah, uh -huh. very easy to do. You would put one of these on each corner, mm -hmm. and then that will enable it to slide on, on, your, on your carpet or, or oh. your hardwood floors oh. without snagging or scratching. Uh -huh. So that's what you would do if, it a was a, if your bed wasn't very high. Uh -huh. Now, we're going to get to our, our main one over here, and this is a large drawer. I, it's great shape. I like the way it was built. Um, I'm going to flip this one over. That and is here, heavy duty yeah, and very the, sturdy. And on the underside, we're going to duplicate what I did here on this one. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we've got a very thin bottom. So what we're going to do on oh. this is I take a piece of plywood, and I would just take ordinary woodworker's glue and glue that to the bottom of it here. Oh, All right? now if it was a like this one looks like a this thicker. is thicker. Could you, you, could, you go you ahead could, and do you it? You put the screws in, oh, but okay. it doesn't require very much. So we'd glue mm -hmm. that on there, and then we would take an inexpensive furniture yes. caster, uh -huh. and these are very easy to work with. I've got one here that um, just screws on. In this case, then, we would then take our, again, pre-drill our holes, take our screwdriver, and just screw these in to the bottom of our plywood, because mm -hmm. our plywood's going to give us more strength well, than just putting true. this right in the bottom. So even if you had one like this, it seems like it's a little more sturdy. It wouldn't hurt to go ahead and put no, the plywood you, you on No, you can it do it this, because you've again, got the room. you do that on each of the four corners like you have here, uh -huh. and then you've got an easy way to slide it in and out. That's so, great. So we got your choice uh -huh. of the glides or uh -huh. the casters. Now, one thing I also want to show you on the front of this one is that sometimes we run into a case where this old finish is getting dry and worn yeah, out. It, uh -huh. uh, you know, we talked about the fact that you can change the yeah. hardware if you want to. But if you want to hold that for just mm -hmm. a second, I'm going to show you with a, with a one of my favorite products. This is called Wipe On Poly. Oh. And you take the Wipe On Poly in a rag. That's and like you a just, finish. It's like a finish. Uh -huh, it's we're not put, a cleaner. Actually, we're putting a new finish over the top of the existing one. Oh. And the Wipe On Poly dries quickly and gives you that great shine that mm -hmm. we all want to see. So we've got our combination of, you know, we can touch up our scratches, we can put on a wipe on poly, uh -huh. and then, like I say, we end up wow. with our casters on the bottom or our glides uh -huh. to move it in and out. We didn't spend much money at all. No, no. just need to have the know-how, which uh, is what I always learn from you. Thank you so much, George. This is a great project. Nancy, it's so nice to have you here. And when you said we were going to do a segment on scarves, I thought, oh, good, because I have a closet full of them. But I have to admit, I really sort of have a phobia about them. I put them on. They look really pretty for a few minutes. And then by the time I get to work or to a luncheon or something, it's coming down or apart. It's in the way. So I'm glad you're here. Well, I hear that story so many times from women who tell me that they don't wear the scarves that they have. But they're such a a powerful accessory in our wardrobes for two different reasons. Well, three if you count polishing the look of any outfit. You just do look more put together. But a scarf around your neck really tells everyone who looks at you, hey, look up here at my face and never mind my hips or my tummy or oh. whatever figure challenges we may be concerned about. And That's it seems that point. every woman has her share of those. And they're wonderful for bringing together kind of unexpected color combinations and letting you wear your wardrobe in a lot of different mm -hmm. ways. For instance, most people wouldn't really think of putting this blush pink jacket over a chocolate brown turtleneck, but look how right it looks when you introduce a scarf that incorporates both of uh -huh. those colors, both colors, all of a sudden it says, wow, wow. it's uh -huh. an outfit. And it can update our wardrobe without us having to spend a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. So the trick is simply knowing ways to wear a scarf mm -hmm. that are, number one, easy to do, but number two, just as you referenced, 
easy to wear all day. So uh -huh. you're not fussing with it all day. Mm -hmm. So would you like for me to show you yes, a few? Yes, please, I need this. <gasps> okay, well let's start with our jacket and turtleneck combo. And the easiest thing to do with the scarf when you're wearing a jacket is just to kick up the collar of the jacket a little bit in the back so that you can slide the scarf under that collar, under the lapel, and let it just hang down the front. The oh. benefit of this one in particular is that it brings that darker underlayer color off onto the lighter jacket color. Mm -hmm. So now the whole thing looks more integrated yep. instead of kind of standing apart. Right, it looks like it goes together. Now if you'd rather have it inside the jacket, you can just tuck it into the neckline. The neckline of the jacket now is going to weight that and hold it in place. Oh, it's yeah. simply hanging down the front where it's giving you a nice strong vertical that makes your body look taller and taller and slimmer. equals slimmer oh. <laughs> every time. Uh -huh. Can't beat that. Now some people prefer to have that anchored in some way and that's just fine too. But what most people would do is start to tie a square knot, right. which is okay, but a square knot causes the ends to kind of wonk out funny rather than hanging nice and straight. Oh. What's just as easy and actually looks better is to tie just a plain loose overhand knot and that's just a knot, a regular knot. You did not mm -hmm. have to be a Girl Scout to do this. <laughs> then you feed the other end right through that knot so it hangs parallel like that, almost like a guy's necktie. And you can adjust this a bit up or You can down. adjust the knot a bit up and down, and that's a very important point because where that knot comes to rest on your upper body really has a big impact on how your proportions look. Mm -hmm. So for gals who are a little less endowed and wouldn't mind a little more va va -voom, if we line that up right with the fullest part of her bust line, all of a sudden she looks a whole cup size bigger. On the other hand, if you already have all the va va boom that you care for, <laughs> yeah. um, or if it's sort of um, being impacted by the pull of gravity and you'd like to look a little more lifted, you just oh. bring the knot up a little higher and it changes uh -huh. the impact altogether. Who would have thought that such a little detail could make such a big visual right. difference? And what a nice way to hold it together so that it's not falling off our shoulders or whatever. Absolutely, you can wear it that way all day long. Now, I've, variation on that one if you're a shorter gal or you're wearing a shorter jacket and you don't want the tails of hanging the scarf out. hanging uh -huh. out the bottom you just start with the two ends together and tie your same big soft fluffy overhand knot but just through oh. both layers uh -huh. and it gives you an entirely and different look. And it shortens look. it more even. Uh -huh. Isn't that easy? Well yeah. Now those look like things you could handle. I can right? do that. We can, I can do we that. Can do this. <laughs> Alrighty. We should mention that although there are all kinds of shapes and sizes for scarves, by far the most versatile is the 60 inch rectangle. These are about 60 inches long and about 15 inches wide. Mm -hmm. And for every scarf tie that I do with these, I start by folding the scarf itself in approximately thirds lengthwise so the fullness is controlled. That causes it to look more purposeful as opposed to just a lot of fabric flying everywhere. Let's slip our jacket off and I'll show you a few okay. other options with this. One of the very easiest ones starts with bringing the two ends of the scarves together. Mm -hmm. You have a loop on the opposite side. You bring it around your neckline and simply tuck the ends <laughs> through the loop. That's another one that's mm -hmm. so easy it's hard to even imagine. Now I read somewhere that the ends should not be exactly even. Is that true or is that it, a personal? It depends on what you're doing. With this one you do want them to be even, but I'm so glad you asked. With the longer ones uh -huh. that we did before, it's better if they are offset by about oh. two inches. And the reason is when the ends get down here in your tummy area, you don't want the hard horizontal of those two ends at the same mm -hmm. spot. I see. By staggering them, now the viewer's eye is going to kind of climb those stair steps and move and in a vertical up. direction. Mm -hmm. See, oh. you know more about scarves than you are well, giving I've, yourself credit for. I've read for. a lot. <laughs> now, let me show you two other fun variations of this easy one. For some people, that first way that we just demonstrated it gets a little bulky right under their chin, especially mm -hmm. if their neck isn't very long. Mm -hmm. So they're happier starting the same way, the two mm -hmm. ends together, the loop on this side, but now we're gonna turn oh. our fingers, almost like an egg beater, uh -huh. and twist that. So now the part that's going around your neck is compacted. It's a little oh, more work to pretty. get the tails 
through the loop because it's tightened. Tight. But now again, it has almost a braided effect. This is a great one to wear at center front or to kick it over here and over wear it the on side. the side. But if you're going to wear it on the side, sneak underneath with a little safety pin, pin and oh, anchor it. Uh, I Otherwise, was going to ask, could we pin it somewhere? You really have to. People who imagine that there's a way to make that just stay <laughs> are living in fantasy land. Now, we took the jacket off. Would these last two that you showed still be doable with a jacket? Absolutely. They're okay. just a little harder to tie with the jacket in place. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, let me show you one more variation of that through the needle um, technique. Started the same way, mm -hmm. two ends, loop. This time we're going to bring just one end through the loop and we're going to pull it up out of the way. Then we're going to take that loop and flip it in a figure eight twist. One twist. You can't do this wrong. It doesn't matter if you twist it to the left or to the right. Oh. It doesn't matter which end you put through first. Uh -huh. Then you put the second end through the new loop and smooth the whole thing down and it gives oh, you this sort of woven or braided woven. lover's uh -huh. knot effect that's very sophisticated. I do warn people to wear this one only on days that you're feeling particularly outgoing because at least half a dozen people will stop you <laughs> and demand a demonstration <laughs> I, of how you tied that scarf. Uh -huh. Okay. Have we done anything so far that looks too difficult I, to me? No, and I, I like these new ideas because I do have several scarves, but I've just always put off wearing them. Well, people do, and you will love it once you get in the habit. Let me show you one more easy sequence with these long ones. Uh -huh. We found the midpoint of the scarf. We're going to start with that midpoint, kind of right about at your Adam's apple. The tails now are hanging down the back. Mm -hmm. We're going to cross them in back, oh, bring, bring them back, them back to the front, and just loosen that enough that it's comfortable. And you can stop right there, or you can tuck the two ends that looks safer to through me. Through the loop, mm -hmm. so it's a little more anchored and they're falling more toward the center. Mm -hmm. Or you can wrap them one more, more time, time. To get that shorter look, if that's what you want. And oh, that pulls those pretty. ends to the center and again gives you that braided kind sort of, of braided. effect. So uh -huh. isn't that fun? Now let me unbraid that really quickly and I'll show you two other options. I never knew there was so much to know about scarves. Well, and, <laughs> and these are all the easy ones. You uh -huh. see those booklets of 50 nifty oh, ways yeah. to tie a scarf that end up with a big origami butterfly on your shoulder <laughs> that will last for about the time that it takes you to get out to your car. Uh -huh. These are, are great all-day all day. ways. Uh -huh. To wear to work or to wear to a luncheon or wherever. Or uh -huh. wherever, to wear to a movie, to wear anywhere you're going. Um, we're going to bring one end over the other end and we started now up it with through the, the loop. Just, uh -huh. And then if we fluff that piece that's coming through the loop, now we have an ascot effect that oh, you can button uh -huh. into the neckline of a shirt or into the neckline of a jacket. Or we can take those ends and bring them through in a square knot. And now we want uh -huh. those ends to fluff out. And this is a good example of why we always cut off that tag first. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. This is not a mattress. It is not a pillow. It is fine to cut off the tag. Uh -huh. And this is one more that, that works well straight ahead or darling off to the side. And might not even have to be pinned because it's it's sort of bulkier over there. Well, it, it's... Or would you suggest still pinning it? I'd pin it. Okay. You know what? Why set yourself up for an extra challenge? Uh -huh. So lots of easy, fun things to do with scarves. I hope I've made you a convert. I'm going to go home and try it. I have a special scarf that goes with this. I should have brought it and you could have played with it. Well, perfect. <laughs> Next time. Well, you have a book that's just wonderful. It not only includes information on scarves, but lots of other ways that I think we women are looking for ways to uh, look good. And that, of course, that's the name of the book, Looking Good. But scarves, jewelry, uh, jeans, lots of different ways. Thank you so much. Well, it was my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to make a beautiful sunflower centerpiece and demonstrate working with painted quilt blocks. One of my next guests is a floral designer, and she's going to show how to make a beautiful spring sunflower centerpiece using spider mums, saffron, and of course, sunflowers. We'll also talk to a quilter and designer who will demonstrate painting quilt blocks to create a one-of-a-kind design. She has lots of finished items, including a wall hanging, a framed picture, and a jean jacket to illustrate this technique. And if you haven't worked with paint sticks before, they create such beautiful colors and they're easy to work with. 
Both of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6600 Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet, or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6600 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.